and it's and you have it there. So the next thing to do now is to perform the genome assembly using fly. Okay, so you just do the assembly. So you include some parameters and I will explain them as we go. So let's call fly and then you indicate nano raw. So this tells fly that the data we are inputting is a nanopore uh, data, but it's a raw data, raw reads. And then we specify the file. So this was the file, the file name. So we say nanopore data dot trend dot fe. And please take note that fly can also assemble reads that are in the fast kill format. So either way it's fine, whether fast A or uh, fast Q, you can just use uh, any, of, any of those formats to do it. So now we specified it. Now let's look at dash O. So dash O is output directory. So this is the name of the directory that fly should create and then place your um, context in there. So let's say dash O, let's say or let's just say assembly. I think that's fine. Um, assembly. Let's put it that way. So this directory will be created for us. You can also use any name of your choice. Here is directory that we use. Then let's add some additional options. One of the options we are going to add is the genome size, which we say dash gen. And we say 5.6 M. Uh, because it's a microbacterium ultrans isolate. Uh, the genome size is around this, so you just put it this way. You can just experiment with the numbers, but this should be fine with the organism we are dealing with. And then we also indicate dash T for threats. Okay, so threats, let's just say 10. And then the other option we are going to add is polishing. So we want to include polishing. By default, fly does uh, one iteration polishing. So we are going to increase it. I think the maximum, the last time I checked, the maximum was 10 or so, but let's use um, just, um, let's make it two. So we say dash two. I mean, we are making it two so that you can quickly get your, your assembly and done so that you can just do other stuff. But later on, you can just experiment with the numbers and see how it improves your um, assembly um, context. So that's how it is. So once we are done with this, you can then run it. So yeah, so let me also stretch on this. So here, because the genome size is MB, that is why we use M. If it's a different um, unit, you just have to make sure you put it there. So it's M and then, yeah, so that, that's what I'll say. But just try, if there are other organisms which has um, higher uh, um, genome size, just make sure you put the appropriate um, units and the appropriate values uh, there. As well. So just take it. And let me also say that with fly you can also assemble pack bio reads. And that is why this here is important. Because this tells uh, fly which sequencing platform and it will use the appropriate algorithms to do the assembly. So it's important to specify uh, which sequencing technology we are using here. So that is what we have to do. So now let's just run um, this uh, tool. So you will see that the assembly um, process has been started. So you just wait whilst it runs. Okay, so genome assembly has been done. It's complete. And that is why you have this message here. Okay, just to let you know that Fly has finished everything. Now, once Fly completes the assembly, it also gives you some statistics here that you can use for QC purposes. So N50, fragments, total length, and mean cover order. These are things that uh, we will look at in detail, but it helps you to uh, really confirm that indeed, um, the organisms um, that you are dealing with are really what you think they are by, by looking at some of these statistics. And it will also help you to detect maybe there, maybe there were some anomalies or maybe you could also improve um, the genome assembly. So these are things that we just have to um, look at, but I'll try and also look at uh, topics uh, around that area of um, QC on genome assembly data. So, this is how it is. So, 
It will also tell you where it has saved the assembly context. So the final assembly, this is the file. Okay, so this file will contain context. So the context are uh, short um, sequences that you can later process to get your scaffold. Okay, so let's go into that. Uh, let's clear the screen first. Oh, and before I go, let me also say that notice that we had what? Polishing, we did two. We did I equals two. And so we had two iterations, which is this one. Notice this one here. Polishing genome one over two. Polishing genome two over two. So, and that's how it is. So you can increase it. And the, the higher the number, the longer it will take for the assembly to um, complete because these are iterations. So that means it will have to go um, over and then redo some of the stuffs again. So let's clear the screen. Let's do an LS. And notice the directory we created. That's, we didn't create it by the way. So we specified um, when we were um, calling fly to do the assembly. So this is where um, our interest is going to be now. So let's ls that directory. We have a number of stuff there. Okay. So let's look at the log here. So we can just do cat assembly slash fly dot log. Yeah, so this is the same thing as what we saw. So these are logs you can just go into and investigate. So some of these things are there so that you can investigate and see what really happened in the process of assembly. It helps also for debugging purposes and for other stuff. So that, that's how it is. Um, yeah, assembly statistics. Yeah, so you have it here. Uh, but there's also a tool that can help you to do a detailed statistics. It's called so if you want to look at um, your assembly uh, uh, quality and then some statistics, you can just look at that tool. That tool. I will leave the link to that um, tool also in the description box. So use that to get some QC um, done for your assembly. So that's how it is. So um, let's do ls again to assembly. So there's a file you are interested in. There's a context. So um, let's say head. Assembly, this is the directory, and this is the file dot faster. Okay, so this contig one. You can also cd into it directly and then just um, do the head, but it's fine, just experiment. So, how many contigs do you have? This is a fast A file. Okay, so for fast A files, what happens is each sequence begins with this sign here, the greater than sign here. So if you want to know how many contexts are present or how many sequences are present in the first A file in general, you can just count the number of this and you get it. So let's say you can say grep and then assembly assembly dot faster first A and then just do WC dash L. This will count how many contexts. So you have 66 contexts here for us. So and that's how it is, but it's fine. So the purpose was just to get the um, genome assembly done. And now we have what we need here. So, and we also did some polishing. So it has been very good. So I believe this has been helpful. And then you can now proceed to do your other stuffs as well.